The following video is entirely based on interviews and stories reported by other media outlets, which we collect and curate in an attempt to provide one coherent and well-rounded history piece from the world of professional wrestling. Additionally, the subject matter of today's video contains adult themes and is not intended for younger viewers. WrestleTalk would like to add that unless stated otherwise, all claims in this video are from those interviewed and are allegations. Support WrestleTalk! Like us on Facebook. WWE announced the fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal for WrestleMania 34. But after media and fan backlash, the name was changed just a few days later. I am Luke Owen, and this is why WWE cancelled the fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. On the Monday 12th March 2018 edition of Monday Night Raw, WWE announced the fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal for WrestleMania 34, an all-female version of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. WWE presented Moolah in a video package as a trailblazer who was history-making and a pioneer of women's wrestling. Despite fan backlash from the outset, WWE doubled down on their decision to dedicate the match to the fabulous Moolah by replaying the video on SmackDown Live. However, on Thursday the 15th of March 2018, WWE issued a statement saying, After further consideration, we believe it's best to proceed with the name WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. What remains most important is that this historic match is part of WWE's unwavering commitment to the women's division. It was announced rather quickly after the announcement that WWE hadn't made this decision of their own accord, and were instead pushed into it by the event's sponsor, Snickers, who received calls and emails from WWE fans who were upset about the match. Joseph Currier wrote in Figure 4, Weekly, Snickers called the decision to honor Moolah unacceptable and noted that they were engaging with WWE to express their disappointment. So why was there fan backlash to a match dedicated to the fabulous Moolah, who WWE called a trailblazing pioneer? In 2006, the family of Sweet Georgia Brown, who was trained by Moolah and her then partner Buddy Lee in the 1950s and 60s, alleged that she was made to have sex with men that Moolah would send to her hotel room, and if she refused, she would be badly beaten. Murphy Falk wrote in the free times from an account by one of Sweet Georgia Brown's daughters, sometimes her eyes swelled shut, she had a tooth knocked out, and she was threatened with worse. Not only that, but the family alleged that Brown was made to become a drug addict by Moolah and Lee as a way to control her and her income. Luna Vachon, who trained under Moolah, also felt that she was taken advantage of by both Moolah and male photographers that she hired. Ryan Satin of Pro Wrestling Sheet reached out to another one of her students, who wrestled under the name Mad Maxine, who told him she skimmed their money, she ignored women who were badly hurt, she pimped women out to creepy men, and on and on. She was not a mother figure. I met her in my early 20s, and I had never met such a monstrous person. Maxine debuted for the WWF in 1985 as a contender to Wendy Richter, and was even set to be one of the main characters in Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling cartoon, but retired the following year, citing Moolah as the reason she left wrestling. She told Slam Magazine in 2014, Moolah did send girls out to this guy in Arizona and pimped them out. I actually spoke to him on the phone and asked him what he was looking for. He said, if I'm spending all this money, you know what I want. She claims that Moolah took at least half of what she was earning from her guaranteed WWF contract and didn't actually tell her about the plans that she was going to be in Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling cartoon. When Mad Maxine retired, Moolah took her place in the cartoon and took her challenger spot for Wendy Richter. Another trainee, Debbie Johnson, said in 2014 that Moolah was plain evil. She added in an interview with Lady Sports, I wasn't allowed to have any friends except for the other girls who were there, and I couldn't trust any of them. If I told someone something in confidence, always got back to Moolah and I would be dealt with for it. If I f***ed her off too much, she wouldn't let me work, and that meant starving, so I had to walk on eggshells for a long time. Moolah allegedly had all her trainees sign exclusive contracts to her and hand over their paychecks before they got to look at them. According to several students, she would take between 25 and 35% of their earnings, but would also deduct food and travel expenses. Students also had to live in the Moolah compound, where many have claimed she charged them more rent than money they earned from bookings, which meant they fell into debt and further into her control. Johnson added in her interview with Lady Sports, I worked my ass off for her for almost two years and I never had any money coming to me. And the first time she paid me, I got $125 and I thought I was rich. The women who worked for her made her a very wealthy person. It wasn't her talent that earned her what she had, but the talent of 
all the women that worked for her. In the 1960s and 70s, Moolah worked directly with Vince McMahon Sr. and essentially single-handedly promoted women's wrestling in North America. However, because she was organizing, she was always on top of the card, holding the women's championship for 28 years. Years. Even into her 60s and as a grandmother, Moolah remained at the top of women's wrestling. Some students have even alleged that Moolah trained them poorly on purpose so they were never as good as her in the ring. And because Moolah controlled all of her students' bookings, they had to stay in her good graces, otherwise they wouldn't get any work. Sandy Parker said in 2008, I wasn't on her good side because I wouldn't do what she wanted me to do. That was one of the reasons I never worked Madison Square Garden because every time the bookings came up, I'd be on her bad side. As far as I'm concerned, I could wrestle just as good as any of those girls who were on Moolah's good side. There's also the story that in an act of spite, Moolah got the WWF to shut down the women's tag team division. In the lead up to WrestleMania 5, there was reportedly going to be the culmination of a feud between the Jumping Bomb Angels and the Glamour Girls for the WWF Women's Tag Team Championships. However, because both teams had stopped working for Moolah, she called Judy Martin of Glamour Girls during WWF's tour of Japan and told them the offer wanted the Jumping Bomb Angels to drop the belt on that tour rather than at WrestleMania. Although there was some confusion between the four women, they did the title switch, but then got a call from the WWF who were upset that they went over their heads and screwed up WrestleMania plans. Lelaney Kai said in her RF shoot interview, Pat Patterson or someone from the office said, you girls just screwed up. And Judy asked why, and he goes, how could you just go over our heads and switch the belts like that? You just messed up everything for WrestleMania. She tried to tell them about Moolah and it's like they didn't hear or care. They were just mad we switched the belts from them. The match was scrapped and the belts were retired. Then of course there was the very first WWE screw job in 1985 when Moolah dressed under the disguise of the Spider Lady pinned Wendy Richter for the WWF Women's Championship even though Richter kicked out at one. Richter told the Baltimore Sun in 2010, all I know was with Moolah I've got to look out for myself. She'll try and hurt you, she'll try and pin you and I knew she couldn't pin me, she could but what I didn't count on was the referee getting paid off. However, one of Moolah's former students, Joyce Grable, has stepped forward to defend Moolah and deny many of the allegations made about her. Nigel Sherrod, who is on a one-man crusade to clear Moolah's name, had Grable on his YouTube channel where she said, As far as I was concerned, she never sent me nobody. And I had a good body back then. I was kind of pretty, long blonde hair, especially when I was in Puerto Rico and Mexico. If she was going to pimp someone out, I would have been number one on the list. With all of the bad press reported by Moolah over the last decade or so, with so many more accounts and allegations that we haven't listed in this video, why would WWE risk naming a match after her? The answer should be obvious. Dave Meltzer wrote in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Moolah was always close with Vince McMahon's father, and she sold her world title belt to the current Vince McMahon when he expanded in 1984 and became part of the family. We have other WWE backstage expose videos here on WrestleTalk, so click the videos on screen right now for more awesome content.